Okay, let's start our class with the station of Umul Kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay, in the last class, we learned about how the, what we call the polarity uh, of the material can influence the adherence to the grease and fat towards uh, material lah. For example, in the last class, we learned about this thing eh, about the con plastic container and then you have a grease on it and we describe why this thing happen eh, why this thing uh, always problem when you wear the this plastic container instead of wearing the glass or metal container. So it's about the polarity thing, eh? uh, So let me close this first. So, uh, <coughs> so we learn that uh, the polar. What we learn uh, in previous class, we learn about the polar, and then we learn about the non-polar thing, and how this polar like the polar, and how non-polar like to uh, mingle with the non-polar. We also learn about the dual nature of the soap. I mean the amphiphilic, amphiphi. Whatever lah, I think you understand lah. Amphiphilic nature, nature of the soap, uh, where you have this what we call the polar heat, polar heat, and then you have sort of like uh, the non-polar, ni lah, non-polar non polar lah. and then because of this configuration this soup have this configuration it can sort of like uh, reorient themselves to trap the grease so you have for example you have this is the grease so whether this is a grease then the what we call this uh, non polar tail because the grease itself is a uh, non polar the grease or fatty acid is made of the hydrocarbon so we know that is a non polar so the non polar tail we sort of like reorient like this reorient themselves like this and then you have the non polar uh, polar part polar head like this lah the polar head the polar head here normally uh, the uh, acid lah because acid you have this c o o h eh? and then the non polar part the the what we call the tail is basically this uh, the the carbon chain lah the c s2 c s2 the, the the thing lah c s2 so because of this, uh, they reorient themselves, and you, if you flow the water around that, this trap bubble we call it a uh, micelle. We call this thing as a micelle will carry away by the flow of water, and then you can remove all the grease in your hand or in your what you call in the uh, container. So that is what we learn uh, uh, last class lah, last class uh, about this thing. The term that you need to know is polar non polar amphiphilic micel yeah that that's the thing lah and how the amphiphilic uh, molecule looks like so this is how it looks like eh the how this amphiphilic molecule looks like eh it have both polar and non polar it try to make a piece lah for example if you have uh, you have for example you put in the container let's say like a beaker if you have water inside water and then on top of that you have oil you have oil you have oil and then you have water normally water and oil doesn't mix so they are no it's like they are at war with each other so basically the soap when you put the soap this thing will sort of like mix together lah they make the emulsion so that is the purpose of this uh, amphiphilic nature or we call it detergent soap or whatever lah so that's what we learned in the last class so now uh what under the chemistry because what we learned just now is all under the chemistry eh? chemistry or chemical characteristic of the polymer we are under chemical characteristic of the polymer so now let's look uh on how we can use this uh, this polar non polar and the uh, amphiphilic nature of whatever this thing to create a material that uh, to create like a uh, one uh, certain material that is useful in your daily life so for that let's see this thing uh not here this thing okay for that let's see this thing eh? so this in front of you okay so this is just uh, like a sheet of something so this is basically ptfe ptfe so what i show you now is ptfe sheet let me make you here let me bring you here and then let me uh, make this thing with uh, 
with this you need to do slowly and relax if not if you kelam kabut it will not work okay so i put here slowly and then i think i can put you here yeah i think it's okay lah like that i think i want to bring this a little bit here bawah sikit okay so so that's it so now we want to talk about something called PTFE eh? PTFE so still under the chemis chemical characteristic eh? but I want to bring this uh, thing uh, in the in in the highlight eh? so PTFE what is PTFE PTFE stand for poly tetra poly tetra flu fluoro fluoro apa eh? fluoro poly tetra fluoro fluoro ethylene fluoro ethylene ethylene eh? ethylene okay so this is polytetrafluoroethylene the what we call we have learned before the seven at least a few lah uh, the polyethylene poly uh, polypropylene uh, what as pvc we learn about the chemical structure of uh, uh, poly apa lagi ya eh? polystyrene and so on but now uh, this is a uh, this is another polymer called PTFE. PTFE, why I bring this polymer now is because in the lab, when you are in the lab, this PTFE thing, we some people call it the king of polymer. Eh? The king of polymer because there are a lot of use of this PTFE. Eh? Uh, in the lab, I mean, this is expensive, but of course, it is very useful lah in the, especially in the lab lah, in the lab and so on why not focus maybe my hand there so the the chemical structure for this is like this huh? you have uh, c c and then you have this thing remember this thing you have n and then now instead of having ash whatever normally hydrocarbon you have carbon and hydrogen but here you have fluorine eh? you have fluorine 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 okay so that is basically the chemical makeup for this so you have the long chain of this carbon chain uh, but uh, instead of hydrogen you have fluorine only okay um <coughs> fluorine okay let's talk about fluorine first eh? this fluorine this fluorine fluorine is uh, one of the most reactive uh, element of all okay is the most reactive element if you compare the element in the periodic table, this fluorine is the most, almost, one of the most reactive among all lah, among all. Uh, meaning that, I mean, uh, meaning that it will react with um, almost anything. For example, if I bring you this, uh, what is periodic table? If I bring you this uh, periodic table, eh, hilang lah. Uh, this periodic table, you can see periodic table, let me close this first. Uh, let me close this first. Let me make this thing like this. If you look at this product table, you see the fluorine is here. Fluorine is what we call on um, on the uh, right here. And if I want to look at this electronegativity, I make you bottom. Eh? If I go to electronegativity here. Uh, uh, wait, why is the, your thing here? Okay. You can see the fluorine. You see the numbers here. 3 point. Uh, I don't know whether you can see. I think you can see, but you need to zoom. Uh, zoom lah. This fluorine have the highest electronegativity among all. Meaning that what? Meaning that electronegativity is basically the ability of the atom to extract the to steal the electron, eh? to attract the electron. So whoever oh. make the whoever make uh, whatever the, so the fluorine try to sort of like attach to other thing lah. So you see the fluorine the electronegativity is three point nine eight. If you compare with the rest is one of is the highest lah is the highest and this fluorine can react with everything almost everything okay except maybe argon neon and helium lah except for this uh, inert gas uh, fluorine uh, doesn't react lah but the rest if you put fluorine to if you blow the fluorine gas to anything it either burn or what either burn or make uh, some reaction for example like this uh, fluorine gas is like this uh. So it's a uh, yellow in color like this. So this is fluorine gas, and then uh, how uh, it will so reactive is that let's see this watch. Is it watch? Okay, watch. It's like this, ah. Huh? Let me put you here. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay, let's see. Put here lah. Florin and charcoal. So, you see this eh? So, you, they put the charcoal in front of the florin. Okay, what happened here is that you have the arang here, charcoal. And then you just blow the, what we call the flooring gas. Normally, when you want to make a fire, you need to sort of like bring the, uh, uh, you need to make a friction and so on, right? But here, just blowing the cold flooring, eh? Because this flooring is not like, the one that they use is just like room temperature only. It's a cold one. So as if you blow something, you blow like that to your hand and then your hand burn. So you see here, how reactive. So just blow. Anything like that? They open the flooring gas and that happens. So that when we talk about reactivity, so that's what does it mean? This meaning that the when you see something like combustion happen, so meaning that the the is so reactive lah. So that's what uh, about flooring lah. Something about flooring lah. Okay, now. So we know that fluorine is very, uh, what we call, very reactive. Um, and maybe people say, maybe people ask, is this fluorine dangerous? Let me make this thing like this, much easier lah. So I think bring here. Uh, so is it this fluorine is very uh, dangerous? In fact, you can find in your, you call in your, in your toothpaste lah, in your toothpaste. To space, if you look at the ingredient, you get uh, inside that you have this what we call what we call the fluoride lah, fluoride, fluoride, fluoride. Also, is a combination of fluorine and something else. Okay, so because we see just now the fluorine is so reactive. Now the question is fluorine, then is fluoride here is dangerous? So that that's the question. Normally people ask, is this fluoride is so dangerous? Does it uh, uh interfere with your health or whatsoever? Normally, yeah. Normally when what we call the more reactive the element, okay. What we see just now is element. Eh? The more reactive, reactive the element, the more stable, stable their compound, compound. Okay, fluorine is element. Okay. Compound is basically when that element combined with other thing making a molecule. Okay, it's like a uh, sodium chloride. It's, it's as if like uh, sodium chloride. So this is basically sodium chloride, which is the salt, table salt, eh? table salt. You know the chlorine here. You know chlorine like chlorine is uh, one of the dangerous thing lah. So people uh, people use chlorine put into the what we call the swimming pool to kill the bacteria and so on. Uh, people use the chlorine gas to in the war and so on. But now, when the chlorine combine with the sodium, okay, when the chlorine combine the sodium, you get something that is so, so, so stable lah, like a table salt. You can eat that. So normally, when you have something so uh, reactive, when in the element state, when you make a compound, normally they become uh, so stable. Okay, the reason for that is that. Um, when I say uh, something reactive, it means that large amount of energy. Eh? When I say uh, something reactive, large amount of energy. For example, let's see this thing first. Eh? For example, you have chlorine eh? and then you have uh, sodium here. In order for chlorine and sodium combine with each other, you it need a very high energy for this uh, chlorine uh, combined with this, uh, this uh, sodium. sodium lah. It requires large amount of energy. Large not require, I mean, large amount of energy is released for them to combine, okay? Combine together. So that the resulting compound, the sodium chloride, is so stable because the equivalent energy must be put into that in order to sort of like, what we call, to break, to break them apart. Once they, because here is basically, you release, you already release large amount of energy to get what we call the NaCl and then in order to break that so
So, so in order in order to tear them apart, them apart, equivalent amount of energy need to be need to be provided lah, provided, provided. That's why you see the the table salt, the sodium sodium chloride is a salt garam. If you want to break them apart using heat, heat is energy, right? You need a lot of, uh, you cannot, you need a very high temperature to break them. So if I go here, if I go here, uh, let's say I go, where is the thing? I go putting uh, here or let's say salt. Eh? So let me put a uh, salt, salt, salt is sodium, salt, salt. Uh, temperature, temperature, melt. Okay, you see it takes around 800 Celsius and above lah. The melting point is around 800 Celsius in order for you to make salt dissolve. Okay, uh, I mean become water lah. Okay, when you put salt in the water is different thing. Eh? When you put salt in the water is uh, typically is different thing. It's because of polar and non-polar. Eh? Uh, this what I show here when you put temperature to heat the salt that's basically you you sort of uh, what we call to infuse the energy to the salt to break the bond okay when you put salt in the water yes the bond is break but the reason for that is because of the polar the 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 polar water will sort of like uh, bring out the sodium and chloride ion out lah because when you put in the water like this when you put salt in the water let me put here when you put salt in the water so you have salt you know when you try to heat you need like 800 celsius okay this is salt okay meaning that you get what well, after you heat you get like pure salt lah pure salt um, pure molten salt molten salt uh, but then when you try to sort of like put in water put in water you can dissolve salt dissolve salt in just like room temperature the reason for that uh, it because uh, the polar water so you you know the water have this what we call this O and then you have the ash here so you have ash 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 and we know the ash we learned in the previous class the ash so they have some polarity here so you have this what we call the ash is a positive charge sort of like uh, electrically uh, it is positive in nature and then the what we call the the oxygen here the in the red is basically the negative in nature so in salt the salt itself the na and acl the na is basically uh na plus lah na plus and then cl is cl negative so the salt uh they combine each other the the, the way how this combine is uh through the ionic bond eh? not the covalent bond whatsoever there are no covalent covalent bond meaning that they share they share for example this cf here this is covalent bond from here to here this to here this to here this to here this is covalent bond but when you see the salt okay the salt is basically the ionic bond okay so they are they are not sharing the electron Okay, they just ionic eh? so they are uh, the for example the positive and negative ion so when you have positive and negative they normally combine each other but now when you put the salt here into the water so you have this water and also you have this salt what happened now the positive like we learned in previous class the polar will try to sort of like uh, dissolve the polar the polar like the polar the non-polar like the non-polar because salt so this thing the salt have this different polarity the positive and negative then when you put salt in the water then the water molecule which is polar will try to take this uh, try to dissolve this that's why salt is easily dissolved in water but when you try to heat it then it take a lot of uh, heat lah in order to break them apart so that is about the polarity and so on. So what does what? Uh, so now what all this thing have to do with this PTFE? Okay. So if you look here, 
as I said before, the fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table. So in case of salt, uh, then it's not so electronegativity. It's, it's, it's not so electronegative. But for the fluorine here, the fluorine here is so electronegative so that it will sort of like, uh, what we call gather, not gather, I mean that sort of like uh, attract the electron from the carbon here and they are sort of like will never will not will not try to release it i mean that meaning that it will combine with the carbon and then it will try to attach to that carbon dearly meaning that it will try to do whatever it takes to not being separated okay there are very few element, uh, few molecule that can uh, break this, uh, ni lah, break this what you call, this bond between fluorine and carbon. So th what that means is that when you have this PTFE, when you have this PTFE thing, no other molecule can interact with it. Meaning that this, uh, what you call, let me show this thing. This thing, whatever you see this thing, is so inert, it becomes, it, it be so inert because the fluorine atom and the carbon atom uh, they try not to release each other lah. so that's why when you try to put any chemical on this this thing will not nothing will happen because it, as if this thing is, is inert lah. inert meaning that it will not react with other things so that's why in the laboratory you will see a lot of uh, this thing is very priced very uh very desired lah in the laboratory because you can use this you can make a for example like a cup or whatever and then you can use that to put all uh, any dangerous chemical on that and then that cup made from the ptfe still re remain intact sometimes uh, if you use plastic eh, if you use normal plastic and then you put uh, some acid some strong acid the plus or some organic solvent that plastic will be melt and so on will be sort of like degrade and so on so that's why people use glass but because glass they, they are better resistant to this chemical attack but sometimes people don't want to use glass because glass is brittle sometimes you you cannot uh, you want you want to ship something for example you want to ship a certain chemical uh, sometimes you don't want to use glass because for glass if somebody sort of like uh, uh, what we call accidentally uh, release the glass and then the glass goes down and then it shatter even though the glass have this good chemical resistance but then the problem with the glass is that it have this uh, brittle characteristic so this this thing is not brittle it's like very tough lah very tough it's just like a plastic but then the the best thing about this is that it's inert mean that it's not react with other chemical Okay, so so that's one thing about the PTFE is uh, what we call is a uh, very inert. Why? Because the strong CF bond, the strong this bond, the strong CF bond that we this thing, the, the, the strong the the strong the carbon and uh, fluorine bond uh, are extremely uh, resistant to attack by the other reagent lah, making this PTFE overally inert lah. Uh, it will not react with any chemical in the laboratory. Most of the chemical, lah, nothing, nothing happened to this when you splash any chemical. So, so that's one properties of the PTFE. So one properties of PTFE is in it. Okay, in it. So that's one property of uh, PTFE. And the reason I have uh, mentioned before, lah. Okay, you see, even for the chlorine and uh, sodium, uh, you you need uh, a lot of energy to break them. What more with the fluorine? Because fluorine uh, still the electron much more strongly than uh, chlorine. Okay, so that's one properties of the PTFE. The second properties of the PTFE. So let me put here. The second properties of the PTFE is that it is slippery, eh? slippery, slippery. Okay, I mean you. you I mean, but it's very split, split, slippery lah here. Meaning that if you wear the shoes where the soles are made from the PTFE, you will not uh, able to grip. Eh? Uh, uh, you need to... Uh, ni lah. It's very slippery. Lah. It's very slippery in nature. Meaning that no other molecule, eh, almost no other molecule 
can stick to it okay no other molecule can stick to it okay so and this both inertness meaning that the spree meaning that uh, no other molecules stick on it stick on it lah so these two things the slippery part the slippery and also the inertness of the PTFE uh, is a desirable characteristic uh, when you want to make your food in the kitchen lah because sometimes when you want to cook your food you want something that is inert because if the thing is not inert when you cook you use heat right when if let's say you use something that is not inert uh, the polymer will react with uh, the heat and then maybe degrade and when you eat your food when you take your food that polymer will sort of like remain in that food and then when you ingest that food when you eat that food the food goes inside and then whatever things that is uh, polymer that uh, with the food that you ingest will sort of like uh, messing with your hormone and so on so that's why the inertness is important and also the slipperiness when you have the slipperiness you can create this non-stick uh, condition okay so when you cook your food then you have uh, you can sort of easily uh, remove the food from this uh, utensil and so on lah so that's why people use teflon eh? people use uh, people use uh, that's why uh, they 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 create the teflon Teflon is basically the brand name. This is basically the brand name for PTFE lah. PTFE. When you heard Teflon, Tefal, whatsoever, that is basically PT, uh, PTFE lah. So basically this thing. So this is a, a pan, frying pan. So from Tefal, when you heard Tefal, so basically Tefal meaning that the Tef here is basically Teflon coating lah. So the pan itself is, uh, is made from what we call from uh, metal okay because why because you want to conduct the heat you conduct the heat okay that's why they make metal but this thing they coat with the teflon or ptfe the reason for that is to to use the 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 slippery characteristic of that teflon because if you put metal if you don't coat this thing metal if you try to go into law go into law on the metal pan uh if you don't use any grease any uh, any grease if you don't use any oil then it's very difficult for you to sort of like uh, to take out the um, the 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 eggs out eh? the the telur the, the eggs out um that's why people use oil in order to to heat and also to easily take out but if you don't want to you if you use a minimal oil you need something like teflon coating like this so that uh, once the egg is cooked then you can uh, remove it due to this non-stick capability of the teflon so basically what happened is that this thing they make uh they, they could they use this thing to coat this uh, what we call this uh, uh teflon pan lah. so that thing eh? uh plus so plus the teflon also have high the ptfe the another characteristic let's say i put the number three is high melting point high melting point eh? high melting point you can see that like, i will not see so i need to put down eh? high melting point high melting point so you have three characteristics of uh, ptfe or teflon eh? so slippery high melting point and one more thing is inertness eh? so that is why people use teflon to do this thing because this uh, high melting point meaning that this teflon the, the coating on this thing can uh, resist the temperature they have high uh, what we call melting point around 300 plus uh, 300 plus above 300 plus celsius and normally when you want to cook your food you don't need until 300 lah you normally you use uh, you you use in the you use the temperature in the range around 100 to 200 plus like that only for 300 celsius and above your food already become what we call uh, become uh, burn and so on eh? okay so and even though even though let's say by mistake you you hit the stove very hot meaning that you you hit uh, you you somehow overheat your food to the point that the teflon will be melted and it, even that happen if you eat that food 
with some Teflon in that in, into your body because of the inertness of the Teflon, then it will not mess up with your hormone lah. So you still safe lah. You still safe even though you hit this thing uh, very high. Even though the Teflon, because this Teflon here, you just coat ah. Huh? Over time, it will sort of like uh, leach out. So because of that, uh, people uh, curious, is this coating affect your health later on? If let's say that coating combined with your food and you ingest that food, is it dangerous? Is it harmful to your health? The answer is not not really lah because the Teflon itself, as we learn, is inert ah. Huh? We learn one of the properties of the Teflon is inert ah. Huh? So it doesn't mess up with your whatever lah. The only thing ah, the only thing that what we call the only danger when when you cook with the Teflon is that the fume lah, the fume. So when you when you heat up so high above the melting point, the Teflon will create a fume lah. I mean anything uh, that you heat up, for example any polymer when you heat up up to uh, beyond their melting point they will create the fume the fume will be evaporated okay so there are certain uh, uh, they call it polymer fume fever lah Some, sometimes when you ingest that fume okay uh, more often than not when you go somewhere you can smell uh, some odor lah chemical odor so similar with the fume lah fume uh, in case of the Teflon, they have this what we call polymer fume fever. You will, you will sort of like uh, feeling very uh, now very dizzy lah, very dizzy. Uh, and then uh, there are some case they call they they said that the person who are uh, exposed to the fume of the Teflon uh, will uh, get the fever, but over time it will be okay back lah. But that's only happen when you try to cook beyond the melting point of Teflon lah beyond uh, the uh, uh, melting point of Teflon but uh, that's that's the only danger lah with the Teflon thing okay and the non-stick character eh, the non-stick character the reason why this non-stick okay the reason why this uh, uh, non-stick is because of this uh, one uh, because of what eh? because of this uh, Wonder Wall Force lah Wonder Wall Force uh, we learned before about the London dispersion force and so on. In the last class, we learn about London dispersion force. We learn about the covalent bond and so on. So let me talk a little bit about this slippery part. Eh? The slippery part. Okay, this Teflon here. This what we call Teflon. This is Teflon coating. Let me put the Teflon coating. Teflon coating. This thing is one of the very few surface that a gecko can climb gecko gecko mean uh, cicak lah gecko 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 or cicak cicak kecil so gecko normally you see cicak eh cicak cicak dia boleh um, uh, gecko eh gecko gecko eh, mana gecko eh saya tak buat lagi g e c k o gecko ok so let go image. Okay, so that gecko uh, normally it's big lah, uh, but here we got chicha lah. Uh, normally this gecko, if you see chicha in your home, you can see it will sort of like uh, walk into the wall and so on as it's nothing lah. Okay, if you look at the at the what we call at the gecko feet, eh, at the gecko feet, actually there are no no no. Cangkuk apa? Cangkuk. No hook or no no secret. Gecko doesn't secret any glue or whatever here. If you try to learn about the gecko feet, there are no glue. There are no uh, hook or whatsoever in the gecko feet. Okay. So the way how gecko and the wall uh, sort of stick together is due to the wonder wall force. Uh, we cannot go in detail lah but... Uh, the idea is that this gecko normally they can uh, walk to anything, okay? But for this Teflon, the one that you see just now, the one that you see just now, this thing, if you put gecko here, chicha, they will cannot, they will not climb here, they will not climb here. That's how slippery this thing is lah. Um, 
that's have something to do with this uh, what we call the wonder wall force and so on i think we will discuss about that in further detail when we come to the nano composite later on because this is uh, have something to do with a nano wool and so on lah but just for time being uh, enough for you to know that this is so slippery to the point that the most stick not the most sticky i mean the most uh, yeah sticky animal on the world like a gecko cannot climb here okay you can see in the youtube like they are uh, sort of that uh, in the youtube they they have that thing lah okay so so now the question to ponder eh? if let's say silicon is so slippery if nothing stick to the teflon then how come people make this how come people coat the silicon to the metal itself because previously we said that silicon that uh, not silicon i mean teflon here teflon is not stick but then how they make them stick to the metal okay so that the way how they make it is that they try to so so the question here if nothing if nothing uh, stick to teflon to teflon then how does uh, teflon teflon stick to the pen to the pen so that is the question to ponder lah so how they do it so basically what they do is that they try to uh, what we call they, they they do the surface modification eh? so you have this thing you have for example this pen without teflon eh? so this imagine this tef, uh, this metal pen so this metal pen so what we do what they do is that if you look here if you try to uh, make it bigger so you can see the metal like this okay metal is just metal sheet lah uh, so in order to put the teflon on it they try to they first what we do they sandblast sandblast the thing the term is sandblast so I cannot see eh? so let me make it smaller here uh, this uh, cannot see sandblast Sandblast, 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 sandblast. What does it mean by sandblast? Uh, meaning that uh, as if you have a uh, sandpaper, the kertas pasir, you try to sort of like put uh, to use that kertas pasir on certain surface, you create a surface roughness. Meaning that sandblast, you instead of this smooth surface, now you have this sort of like speed like that. You you basically you roughen the surface. The idea for some blasting is basically to roughen the surface, ah, the surface of the metal. So that's the idea of the uh, some blasting, lah. So they will create a lot of pit and scratch on this metal, on this metal surface, okay? And then they put a special look okay, after the some blast. What they did, they put the put special special primer, lah, primer. Mean that a liquid, lah, special primer. Uh, they, they, they pour the special primer not teflon yet they, they pour some special primer here very low viscosity meaning that it can flow so that primer will go into the what we call the pit will we go through the pit and so on lah. and this primer this primer is normally is a commercial commercial secret lah. secret secret and uh, but people uh, said that this primer they have this CH and also CF uh, bond lah. So they have the CH bond in order to to sort of like to attach to the what we call to the metal. And also that primer also have some CF kind bond uh, to attach to the Teflon because as I said before. Teflon is made of what? Teflon is made of the C carbon-carbon uh, and fluorine-fluorine-fluorine. So if this PTFE or Teflon, they saw something, uh, a molecule that is more or less like them, for example, another F, so that sort of like, it's like a polar and polar lah. They, they try to mingle each other. So this uh, primer, the low, visc low viscosity primer, uh, is assumed to have this uh, what we call this uh, characteristic they have this uh, CH bond 
for it to bond with the metal and also the CF bond for it to bond with the Teflon. So they put the primer on this thing and then after that, they take the Teflon, the liquid Teflon and then they pour that. So because uh, the primer have this uh, CF bond, so the Teflon will see that their friend there. So they will uh, sort of attach to that. So after that, they put the Teflon lah. After that, then they put the, the Teflon on top of that thing lah. And then when you have that thing and then they normally they heat it after they put the after they put special primer they put the teflon teflon and then after that after that they heat it heat it until it cure lah. until it cure so curing uh, you learn before in the epoxy one is basically uh, you want something that is liquidy become hard so that's basically curing lah so in this case they use heat lah to uh, cure this thing so that's why you get this uh, teflon coating lah so yep so that's how they make this uh, teflon coating uh so that's that's why uh, we learn okay this thing okay so that's about ptfe eh? so that is about ptfe let me remove this thing okay. that's about the ptfe so let's recap a little bit so PTFE uh, is a special kind of polymer that is inert, slippery, and also uh, have high melting point. The characteristic, this characteristic, this three characteristic make it so valuable in the laboratory and also in the kitchen lah. That's why people say this Teflon PTFE is the king of polymer lah. People want to have this thing. Uh, but of course, this uh, expensive lah. This thing, the one that you see just now, is expensive lah. If you have this like a big block of uh, PTFE, it can cost you like it's like a cylinder. Let's say you have a cylinder of PTFE, it can easily cost you more than three thousand ringgit. That uh, this thing ah, uh, this this big, it can cost you like three thousand ringgit. Okay, it's a uh, it's uh, nila. And you can see the PTFE people use it. This also PTFE, the one that you see uh, that normally when uh, people try to track a uh, pipe like this. So like this, you can see like this thing. Okay, so people, so this also the white thing he thing, this thing also a PTFE. Yeah? The reason why people use this is because uh, first is high temperature. They have this uh, resistant to temp high temperature because it have high melting point. Uh, it's also like the elastoma it can create a gap lah so if you have this at your home you can feel this thing lah it's a very uh, slippery and so on lah this in it lah so this is a kind of the uh, PT, the use of ptfe in construction and so on okay so now that is about the teflon eh? teflon so we know teflon is in it so if you make a food container with the teflon dance normally it's no problem now the problem is that what happened to the rest of the polymer okay what happened to the rest of polymer aside of teflon so now what about what about other polymer other polymer what about the polymer what about other polymer meaning that uh, if let's say you want to use that as a a container especially as a container for the, your food or your drink will you sort of like uh, worry about that polymer leach out to your food and then then you ingest that food uh, you make a lot of uh, harmful thing and so on so normally for teflon we we okay with that but other polymer like PET, P, LDPE and so on then uh, you need to be careful also lah you need to be careful lah Okay, for that, let's see uh, some of this thing. Eh. Uh, what about other polymer? Eh? But before we do that, let's see this uh, one of your friend. Ni, eh? I think Shasha. Mm, Shasha. We have many Shasha. We have Shasha, my Sarah. Not Shasha, my Sarah. One Shasha. Eh? So let's see uh, this from one Shasha first. Eh? Hi, it's me, Shasha. Introducing the new metal tumbler, perfect for sipping your cold and hot drink anywhere, anytime. These tumblers are made from metal or specifically from a stainless steel and comes with the vacuum insulator properties that can keep your favorite beverage up to 5 hours. It doesn't matter your beverage are cold 
or I leave some ice in it for about 6 hours and surprisingly the ice still retain its frozen state. The manufacturing process of this metal tumbler is stainless steel will arrive in the form of pine and sheets and then continue with assembly and welding as well as vacuuming and lastly decorating. Why we use a metal tumbler? This metal tumbler are perfect for both hot and cool drinks. It also tough enough to use daily and perfect for your gear. Why we use this metal tumbler rather than this plastic tumbler? Because this metal tumbler contains no BPA and cannot cause a food poisoning. And also, it don't dent easily rather than this plastic tumbler. You don't have to worry about it breaking or damaging in an extreme temperature. Therefore, use your metal tumbler daily rather than this plastic tumbler. No to plastic, yes to metal. Okay, we have seen before uh, uh, about uh, Shasha uh, talking about this, uh, the use of plastic, uh, the difference between using the plastic and the metal as your container for food or drinks. So here, uh, it said that yes to metal and no to plastic. The reason for that is that uh, the plastic, the the some of the molecule in the plastic can leach out to your drink or whatever especially when you contain the hot drink in in the container lah because when something heated then um, you know plastic will be melted right uh, plastic have low melting point than the metal so when you rise the temperature even though it's not up to the melting point of the plastic somehow it weaken the plastic and the weak and the plastic that is weak the weakened the weakened plastic can can sort of like can uh, release the its own chemical i mean release its chemical out leaching so the term is leaching out uh, into your food so when you ingest that food for example a coffee the hot coffee uh, inside that uh, that have this contaminated with the plastic then uh, you eat that thing and being non inert uh, because this met this what we call the the what we call this plastic the one that uh, Shasha show here the plastic container is not made from the PTFE because as I said PTFE like this is very expensive so people don't do that so people use uh, normal plastic like PET P uh, LDPE and so on lah um, but the problem with that is that that plastic is not inert anymore it's not inert as this PTFE. So when you, when suddenly that thing contaminate your food, you ingest the thing, that non-inner thing will react with your hormone or your whatever. In this case, um, Shasha talked about BPA, bisphenol A. Uh, we will discuss further about BPA in the next class lah, in the next class. Uh, just to give you uh, the, the teaser for the next class, we will talk about the how this plastic uh, in term, still under the chemical characteristic of the plastic but now we talk a little bit go a little bit further to the safety of using plastic in your daily life okay you cannot avoid plastic but then uh, uh, yeah that's the thing that we need to ponder lah because even though thing that like uh, what we call like a metal eh? for example you buy canned food eh? for example you buy canned food like this uh, let's say I put K A K A N N canned food like this canned food like that okay even though you think that this is metal but remember eh? if I have this thing let me I put this thing let me bring this thing eh? let me put this thing uh, let me make this thing like that okay if you have something like this, uh, <coughs> this can, uh, uh, can, can there. If you look inside that, they are plastic. It's not plastic. I mean, they coat with plastic. They coat with the epoxy, and the epoxy, the precursor, be that the thing that make epoxy, the one that we see before this epoxy, the one that we see before, the one that we see before. Eh, tak nampak besar kecil. Okay, besar sikit. Okay. So this thing, the one that they put here, 
they call it plastic lining inside a uh, food can eh? there are reason why they put that thing because uh, if not if you have the acidic uh, food then it will sort of like corrode the steel eh? even though they said it's stainless steel but over time if you have acid it will corrode this thing and that when you corrode you have you ingest the metal also um, but here they put that's why they put this what we call the plastic lining in fact if you have this thing the lid if you go this is on top if you see at the bottom here it's different eh? they're shiny that's metal one of the properties of the metal is lustrous so this lustrous lah they berkilau kilau eh? but when you see on the bottom here it's not so lustrous you see there are some plastic characteristic there so what they do is that this is what we call the plastic lining eh? they, this plastic lining uh, some of um, I think uh, still they some uh, use uh, uh, from the epoxy eh? from the epoxy and one of the precursor of the epoxy is BPA nowadays uh, you heard about BPA BPA right non BPA non BPA plastic and so on so we will talk in detail about that later but just to tell you even though you try to avoid plastic and you think that this is metal but inside that is still plastic also okay so um in case of metal tumbler the shasha metal tum tumbler just now uh it's a little bit different eh? because uh you have this uh in metal in shasha metal tumbler i don't think they have plastic they, they have a uh, totally the stainless steel but we will discuss further uh, in the next class why in the case of shasha stainless steel tumbler you don't need uh, plastic so just give you the idea about what we will learn in the next class so next class hmm, still polymer again i think after the uh, for your midterm they just anti polymer lah. i mean composite i will go after the make break lah so we, as I said before, this is about uh, material science for chemical engineers. So because of that, uh, I need to focus more on polymer because polymer have a lot of this chemistry thing. So that's why uh, you see that for the polymer part, I go again and again and again. So I think now is 9.25. So today I will uh, stop a little bit early because I don't want to enter to talk about B BPA now because if I talk now then it will be drag the the discussion further so better I will save it for the next class so next class we will talk about the BPA the plastic in your food I mean the plastic the safety about plastic the use of plastic today we talk about the chemistry of the plastic but next class we talk about the chemistry but in terms of the safety okay so I think that's it for today um, so we end our class today with recitation of uh, Tasbih Kafarah and Surah Tulu As. Okay, now question time. Ah. We uh, forget about that. So question time. So we have three question. This three question is open to everybody. Uh, even open to those in front uh, that open the camera. And then there are one question only for those who open the camera so the first question uh, tell me uh, about uh, about teflon tell me about teflon anyone afnan siapa afnan afnan okay afnan okay teflon is uh, tpft and teflon is usually used uh, in a steak frying pan because of the properties uh, which is uh, non slippery oh sorry which is slippery so the properties of slippery is that the molecules doesn't stick to it and how does people make the toughness stick to the nonstick uh, non frying pan is by first they do the sand blasting and then they put a special primer on the pan which has low viscosity and then they put a uh, liquid teflon and then heat uh, until it is cured okay thank you uh, Afnan okay the second question the second question is that uh, we know that uh, fluorine is uh, very uh, reactive so now the question is that about this ptfe uh, you have fluorine inside that so is it dangerous or not and why why it become inert now we know fluorine element as a gas is very reactive we see the picture just now but now why this thing is so priced for its inertness 
Why suddenly it become inert? Okay. Rushaidi. Rushaidi. Okay, Rushaidi. Um, so we know that uh, F, uh, fluorine is um most reactive, but what makes uh PTFE is um inert because um when C and F is attached to each other, make a bond. So you make uh this bond is so strong, and when you, this uh this bond is so strong and uh, they will not try uh, try not to release to each other so uh it makes uh it becomes inert which is uh it will not react with other molecules other of c and f okay thank you rushaidi um uh, number four uh and number three number three um tell me uh, about uh, dual nature of soap and how it help to remove the grease uh, in the plastic container okay so want to see whether you recap or not tell me about the dual nature of the soap and how it can be used to remove the grease on the plastic container anyone Tell me about the yeah, soap. Si. Sorry? Shakila. 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 Okay, tell me. Uh, the soap has the dual nature, which is uh, the, 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 the tail of the, the, the non-polar bond, which is, we call it as the tail, and the polar bond, which, which is the head of the, 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 uh, the part of the part. So it is called as amyphilic mycin, mycin. And when uh, it, com it, it, it will combine with the grease uh, and it will attach to the grease. So like when... Uh, How it attached to the grease? Uh, it attached to the grease. How? Because of the the non-polar and the polar. Okay. So let's say the grease is like this. So the grease is what? Polar or non-polar? The grease is. This is grease or oil. Is it polar or non-polar? Non-polar. Non-polar. Okay. So how this thing, the one that this brudu here attached to the grease how the soap which have this uh, polar and non-polar uh, which one will attach to the uh, non-polar okay, the, so tail, the, the tail of the soap the, the non-polar it will be attached to the grease okay so like this huh? uh, by the way uh, okay thank you so by the way when you said amphiphilic muscle this thing is not muscle yet this just amphiphilic. The micelle, M-I-C-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, is this configuration. You, know, you have something like this. Uh, macam, uh, uh, this is micelle. The configuration here is a micelle. So this is what we call micelle. This thing alone is just the the, 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 the amphiphilic. Lah, the, the polar and non-polar. Okay, the last question. The last question for, uh, for um, on those who are on this, uh, open the camera only. Um... Ya, apa ya? Tell me why? Uh, tell me why? Um, for the number four, eh? tell me for the table salt, eh? table salt, table salt, the garam. Eh? Why it requires a lot of energy uh, up to eight hundred Celsius to break that? But why it's easier to dissolve the soap in water? Okay, why it need higher temperature to break the soap? But then you can easily dissolve the soap in water easily lah at room temperature. Okay, understand my question? Just uh, why? Why that thing? Why at one point you need to use a lot of energy in terms of heat 
800 Celsius but why in the water is just like that just you put in the salt in the room temperature it dissolve so why uh, I think I can try siapa uh, okay so siapa 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 uh, siapa Afnan Afnan okay yeah. Afnan so again uh, why apa tu ni uh, why uh, I mean just tell us whatever you know So the table salt uh, requires a uh, lot of energy to melt by itself uh, because uh, because uh, chlorine uh, is a group 17 which is uh, very reactive and when it becomes a compound uh, it becomes very stable which requires a high level of energy to break the bond between the chlorine and the sodium but uh, for the for chlor uh, for the table salt Uh, it is very easy to melt uh, when we mix with water because of the polarity because water is uh, polar and uh, chlorine uh, is uh, has has this also has this polarity uh, which when we uh, which can bond which can, which can mix with the water to make uh, so it can it can carry the, the chlorine it can carry the chlorine away from the sodium Uh, okay uh, the question uh, why uh, you have water as 2 o so yeah. how they take out the chlorine the, so the water is polar and the chlorine also has uh, has polar so it, uh, so the water attracts the chlorine away from the sodium that's why it doesn't require a higher level of energy okay so basically the the this uh, positive part of the water we sort of like uh, positive or negative so And no positive, Posit yeah positive will attract to the negative lah. I mean it's other way around lah. So uh, so this uh, other way around. Which one is in the belakang? I thought it's redo. Oh. I don't know what is redo. Uh, so basically um control Z. Ah, uh, it's better. So the positive here, the positive water here, we sort of like attach to this lah. So we try to break that thing and so on lah. It's like the one that we learned before about the in the last class. We learned about this ah. In the last class, we learned about this thing. Okay. So the hydrogen here, the hydrogen, uh, the positive hydrogen here, will sort of like uh, attracted to the positive, uh, uh, the the negative of the oxygen. So that's why they have this magnet like thing, and then we say that is polar. Uh, is polar can dissolve polar lah. So here, uh, if I look above, when I, I think I said something. Yeah, here this thing. So this thing, the positive here, we somehow try to reorient the, the, the negative of the oxygen. We try to catch this uh, positive uh, sodium ion and also the, the positive of hydrogen here. We try to attach to this chlorine ion and that's uh, like a they try to tear them apart lah so this uh, they try to work together the water we try to work together to break this uh, this uh, ionic bond apart because they have this polarity difference lah the polarity okay i think that's it uh, for 